Maryland football will take down Rutgers if they do this. You are Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And happy Thanksgiving to all you guys out there. Hope you have great time with your family on a great day of football, food, and family and fun on one of the best days of the year. I know I can't wait to eat some of the Thanksgiving Food, but we're still here today to talk about some Maryland football on the day. We're going to talk about how Maryland can take down the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And I think there's one thing if the Terps do, they will win this game on Saturday at 3.30 against Rutgers. And it's stopping the run. This Rutgers team has had a pretty good year. A lot better of a year than they've had in the past. The Terps are currently 6-5 and five and are 3-5 and five in the Big Ten. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are also 3-5 and five in the Big Ten and are right now tied for us to be right behind the Big Three. So this game is to say who is really the fourth best side fourth best team behind the big three on our side of the conference in the big 10 is it maryland or is it Rutgers? are we really the best team outside of the big three we will get a chance to see that um on saturday against the Rutgers scarlet knights and Rutgers is having one of their better seasons they're six and five overall it's their best record since 2014 it's the first time they've been bowl eligible since 2014 when they were eight and five in 2014 so they're similar to us in a lot of ways and their program seems to be on the upper echelon and continuing to go up the mountain and we've had a little bit more consistent success over the last couple of years but this is still a newer relatively newer thing that the Terps are a pretty solid football program and can get usually seven or eight wins over these last couple of years on the season so this is definitely something newer overall but it's also new for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights so we're both kind of in a similar spot as programs both on the uphill climb both climbing the mountain both getting better as a program both look like they've definitely found their more of the rhythm as a program I mean you would like to see Rutgers do it a couple years in a row but this Rutgers program has been terrible over the past couple of years so it's great to see them that they're They have six wins and that it's our last game of the season and it's going to be maybe a a competitive game. I mean, the lines, we'll talk about the lines later on, but the lines do think that it's going to be a competitive game. But let's get back to the point. If Maryland does this one thing, I think they win the game. The reason that I talk about Rutgers has gotten so much better and they're on the uphill climb and they look like a much better program, the number one reason, in my opinion, is their ability to run the football so far this year this team can really run the football overall and that's what gets this team going that's what they do best offensively and i think it's their best unit on their whole entire football team they do a great job of running the football and that is what their identity is and that is a constant theme in the big 10 we see it we see it with michigan we saw last week what michigan did to us they absolutely just pounded the rock it was a close game of course but they were not worried about throwing they did not try and throw with jj mccarthy they were going to pound the rock we see it with penn state all these um big 10 teams have elite running backs it seems like but but statistically Rutgers actually has the best back in the Big Ten not Michigan with Blake Corum not Penn State with Singleton and Allen not Wisconsin who's traditionally really good at running the football it's this Rutgers team who has currently the best running back statistically in the Big Ten. I'm not saying in terms of talent-wise, but this guy is very talented and a very good player. But they have the number one running back in terms of statistics, in terms of rushing yards, and that is Kyle Minyunga. 
Probably their best player. Like I said, the identity of their team will get them going. This guy is number one in the Big Ten in rushing yards. Like I said, he's outperformed Blake Corum and Edwards and all those guys in the Big Ten. Kyle Minyunga is currently on track to finish first and should finish first in the regular season in terms of rushing yards, depending on how he finishes against us and depending on how Blake Corum finishes in that huge Michigan and Ohio State game. But Kyle Minyunga is their identity. He's their light. He's what gets them going. He's what wins them games. He currently has 981 yards and five yards per carry and seven touchdowns and arguably is the best back in the Big Ten. I said he might not be the most talented guy in the Big Ten because there are some really talented backs. But he also is super talented and definitely has his case to be the best running back in the Big Ten. So don't get it twisted. Don't think that this guy is an explosive run. This guy, this guy's the real deal. This is this is the guy that has done similar to what Talia has done for us. He's done <laughs> At a lesser extent, he's not a quarterback, but he has done that for Rutgers, leading them to a better record. And you're going to see in some of the stats that I talk about later, but this guy, Kyle Minyunga, like I said, first in the Big Ten rushing yards, 981 yards. And he also leads the Big Ten in attempts, which I think is a big deal. He leads the Big Ten in attempts. So what does that tell you? You saw what Michigan does against us. They aren't trying to throw the ball. They pound the rock, and you see what Penn State does. You see what Wisconsin does. You see what all the, these teams in the Big Ten do. We're a running football league. We play. We run the ball. We play defense. We're the opposite of, like, the Big 12 or the Pac-12 where it seems like they're just throwing it around. We run the football. And we have really good defensive players. And Rutgers has the number one in terms of yardage and all that, but the number one running back in terms of attempts, which is extremely important, which you can just look at the stats and say, that is Rutgers' identity. If they're outrunning, if this guy's outrunning all the other running backs in the Big Ten, then that means their identity, their face of their football program right now is running the football. So that's the number one thing. I almost forgot. I'm rattling all these stats off about how good Rutgers football is. Um, Kai Minyunga is at running the football. I forgot to say, that's the number one thing that the Maryland got to stop. We got to stop them running the football. The Maryland defensive line has to play well there up front. Bring Bo Braid up into the box. I'm not worried about their passing game with their quarterback. I'm not worried at all. Their quarterback, Gavin Wimsat, their starting QB, he doesn't throw the ball a ton. The main concern with him just like we are worried about with Kyle Minyunga's legs and what he can do at the running back position, the main concern with Gavin Wimsat, their starting QB, is running the ball. He rushed for 143 yards against Indiana. This is their quarterback. This is not the starting running back. He rushed for 143 yards against Indiana. That can't happen. A rushing game like that where they allow 143 yards is inexcusable. You have to adjust if – he rattles off a big carry at the first part of the game. Adjust. Adjust the game plan. Know that it's quarterback run and running back run. Those are the two things we got to stop. All the read options, all that kind of stuff. Those are the two things we had to stop. He rushed for 50 yards against Ohio State. So he's had some big rushing, big rushing days at the quarterback position. And he does huge things in the rushing game too. He's currently 17th in the Big Ten in rushing yards on with 440 yards on the year, which is, an impress, which is impressive with all the great backs, like I said, that are in the Big Ten. That's an impressive stat for their quarterback to have. So they got two guys, Kyle Minyunga and Gavin Wimsatt, that are going to rush the football in their quarterback and their running back. They don't really want to throw the ball. And if you dig even more into it, I digged at a surface level, and then I tried to get a little bit deeper. I said, let's look at their wins and losses and how they perform in their run game. So I just looked at a couple of their Big Ten, Power 5 type of wins. And against Indiana, they beat Indiana 31-14. to Not a very good Indiana team this year, but they beat them 31-14. to And what did Rutgers do well? They almost rushed for 300 yards. They rushed for 276 to be exact. 276 rushing yards, they win 31-14. to When they beat Northwestern, they outrushed Northwestern by like 100 yards. When they beat Virginia Tech, 
They rushed for over 250 yards with 256 overall rushing yards. When they win games, they almost always rush for over 100 yards and usually even more than that, usually over 150 yards. So if you dig into their team, what Maryland has to do, send Bo Braid up in the running game, send Dante Trader up into the box. Stop the run game because I'm not worried about the guys behind us. I think Maryland can do a good job of stopping those guys. And when they lose because they can't run the ball, when they lose, they can't run the ball. Look at the look at the stats. 34 rushing yards versus Iowa. They lose 22 to 0 against Iowa. 22 to 0 against Iowa. Iowa is a pretty solid football team, but you probably shouldn't be losing 22 to 0 to them. And that's because they had 34 rushing yards. They couldn't run the ball. On their loss to Wisconsin this year, they had 64 rushing yards. So if Maryland focuses on ru- on stopping the rush against this Rutgers Scarlet Knight teams, I think Maryland wins this game handily. I think they win the game pretty easily. And I think they move forward and beat this Rutgers team because I think they lean on this. But by no means, Maryland's defensive line is elite. And I would say definitely can stop the run against these guys. And it's going to be easy. But I do have trust that the Maryland defensive line will be able to stop these guys. How do the Terps match up through positions against Rutgers? Let's talk about the different matchups of the day. Let's start with the most important position on the field, the quarterback position. Talia Tungviola versus Gavin Wimsat. Completely different QBs. I just talked about Gavin a lot and what he does in the run game and his lack of kind of what he does in the passing game. But this guy, Gavin, isn't going to throw for a ton of yardage. He's not, they're not going to trust him to throw the ball a ton. It's completely the opposite of Maryland football. This Rutgers team is legitimately just the opposite of what we do, which a lot of the Big Ten teams are. But Gavin Wimsat will rarely throw above like 26 passes. And we know Talia usually throws around 38, 39, 37. He gets up there and don't be surprised if he's up in the 40s, especially if we're trying to come back because Maryland... We know we don't like to run the ball. So I'm looking at, but I'm looking at this matchup and I'm saying Gavin versus Talia. We definitely have the quarterback advantage. Talia is going to be able to create explosive plays with his arm. Gavin does it with his feet, but we know Talia can also do it with his feet. And Talia has a chance to become the all time Big Ten passing leader, which we'll talk about more tomorrow. Um, Make sure you like and subscribe. If you want to have that segment on Talia about how he's about to become possibly the all-time Big Ten passing leader this week against Rutgers. But we have possibly the Big Ten all-time passing leader, and we got a guy that barely throws the ball that really rushes. I think we clearly have the quarterback advantage. I think Talia will create some big plays, and that's a big why. I'm looking at the QB advantage. That's a big why reason why I think that we can beat this Rutgers team because I don't really think that Gavin Wimsat is going to beat us with his arm. And that's a key for the Terps. Make Gavin beat him with beat us with his arm talent because I don't think he'll be able to do it. I know he does some really good things. I know he's a big guy and he has a pretty big arm, but I'm confident that Maryland can match up with Rutgers wide receivers. And we'll move on to the wide receivers now. Rutgers wide receivers, I mean, they're solid, but the reason they don't really go crazy or go off or don't have huge stats, I mean, they don't throw the ball a ton, so it's hard to judge kind of their stats and what they've done. Christian Dremel has 415 yards. Jackson has 347 yards, and Isaiah Washington has 240. I'm not really worried about big plays in terms of their receivers. I think our cornerbacks, Shaquan Shepard, Tarheep Still, after what I saw they do, what I saw them do last week against Michigan and what I've seen them do, In the big games, like first half against Ohio State and some of the better spots that our secondary has played, especially earlier earlier on in the season, I think they can match up with this Rutgers wide receiver room, specifically because Rutgers, they don't really like to throw the ball. Also, Gavin Wimsett isn't – he's not an elite thrower of the football. And then I'm also looking at the wide receivers. I don't see anyone in that group that I say is elite. I would say our wide receiver trio is clearly better than theirs. And that that makes me – Let's move on to the Maryland wide receivers. I think Ty Felton, Caden Prather, and Jayshon Jones, I think they've proved themselves that they can make plays against anyone. They made plays at times against Ohio State, even though we came up short, and even though it was tough for sometimes against Ohio State, which you would expect as they're the best team 
uh, one of the best teams in the country. I guess that'll be um that will get figured out in the next couple of weeks. But they're also making huge plays against Michigan. And Michigan has awesome cornerbacks. They have the guy, Will Johnson, who I think is a really good player. I think he's going to be a first-round pick in next year's NFL draft. So they have really good player. And we saw Cannon Prather make huge plays. We saw Ty Felton make huge plays. And I saw Jay Sean Jones make huge plays. Rutgers secondaries has some solid players, but I'm not worried. I think Maryland wide receivers have proven that they can make plays against anybody. And I think they will create a lot more big plays against this Rutgers um, than the Rutgers receivers. So I think that will play as a huge advantage for the Maryland wide receivers. But I think Talia is going to be able to get the ball to these guys. My biggest question mark is will Maryland be able to run the football I'm going to say it's going to be more of a passing game in Talia's last game. I can see them trying to get make sure he gets the record, too. I know they want this record. I was talking about this with a couple people, and they would love to say that we have the all-time Big Ten passing leader in, Mar- in Big Ten history. That's a huge thing to say in recruiting. That's a huge thing to say to Malik Washington, who I just saw play, actually, who's our number one um number one guy that we definitely want in the 2025 class at the quarterback position. And Malik Washington is definitely the real deal. Definitely a guy that we want to land in the 2025 class can run, has a big arm. He's going to translate into the big 10, into the big 10 passing ranks. And that's why it's huge to say we have the number one quarterback ever in big 10 passing yards. It's a huge recruiting um, it's a huge recruiting thing to say. So that's why I wouldn't be surprised if Maryland's throwing the ball a lot and Roman Hemby in the running back room, um, Antoine Littleton and the rest of them aren't getting a, a ton of use. But I, I just wouldn't be surprised this game if we can't run the ball overall. Um, we'll see what happens, but I would just be I would I wouldn't be surprised if it's a heavy dose of Talia. I don't know if this is Talia's last game. I doubt he opts out for the bowl game. I think he would play. In it is my best guess, but I can definitely see this being a big game for Talia and less about the running back room, especially with the record coming up. And I think if we think about Maryland's defensive line versus Rutgers offensive line, I think Maryland could get some pressure. Rutgers offensive line by no means is elite bunch. It's no means what we saw against Michigan. I think Maryland's defensive line can definitely get some pressure against those guys. I'm looking for um, a King Basote, Krayshawn Fuller. I'm looking for Donald Brown. I'm looking for Kellen Wyatt, who's really stepped up to definitely get some pressure against this Rutgers team. But overall, I think we match up pretty well. Terp secondary versus Rutgers secondary. I think we match up pretty well with their wide receivers, like I said. And I, I don't know. I don't think that anyone has really proven that they can just straight out take our receivers out the game. Um, I think our wide receivers will play well no matter what. So I think Maryland fair, matches up fairly well position group by position group. When I go quarterback, I'd say we have the advantage for sure with Talia. He probably has the advantage with almost anyone he goes against. And I'll be interested to see if Talia's first team all or second team all Big Ten, um, maybe even first team. Because if you watch Michigan and J.J. McCarthy, there's a lot of times where they don't have to throw the football at all, but we'll see what happens with that. But I definitely think we have the quarterback position with an all Big Ten type of player. Running back, Kyle Minyonga definitely has the advantage over our running backs. Roman Hemby's really talented, and I wouldn't even say Kyle Minyonga is a lot more talented, but the Rutgers offensive line does a really good job. If he's leading the Big Ten in attempts and also averaging five yards per carry, that means he's consistently running the football well, which is a big thing overall wide receiver room Maryland has the advantage for sure and then on the defensive side of the ball I would give the edge ah a lot of people could say Rutgers but I really think I have trust in our defense I think our defense is really good I thought we proved it last week I thought we've proven it a lot of times versus the bigger teams we kind of play down to our opponent a lot of times but I think that we have a chance to I think we match up pretty well against this Rutgers team, and I think our defense can get stops against the Rutgers defense as long as we stop the run, like I said before. But let's talk about some predictions, Maryland versus Rutgers predictions. This is pretty much a pick em game. The current line is Maryland minus one and a half. So the Terps are, I guess, their favor, but like not really. The Terps are like minus 140, and Rutgers was like m- minus 110. It's basically a pick em one and a half line. You basically might as well run 
Maryland minus one and a half. That's what I'm going with. I think Maryland minus one and a half. I think the Terps cover. You might as well pick that instead of money line because they probably will win more than one point. But I think Maryland beats Rutgers. I think we know what we have to do going into this game. I think we know we have to stop the run. I think we know we have to stop this Rutgers team in their quarterback run. I think we know how to game plan well for this game. And I'm not worried about the explosive plays. And I know Talia is going to be trying to break that Big Ten passing yardage in this game so that the bowl game, they're able to play different guys, play different quarterbacks, let different guys get looks. But I think the Terps win this game big. I think Mar- – not big. I think Maryland wins and covers the spread. I think Rutgers sticks around. And this is a good Rutgers team. There's a there, there's a reason the line is pretty close. This is a good Rutgers team, but I think we're better than them. I think we're better than Rutgers. We've proven to be better over the last couple of years. I think the Terps win. I'm going to go 28 to 20. The Terps beat Rutgers. That's my final score. But thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every single day talking Maryland football and basketball. Enjoy your Thanksgiving and thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.